In this video, we'll be going through the steps of doing a Western analysis. Now, when you first do an image acquisition, you can preset the analysis type to be Western uh, just by choosing this little pull down right here. And then you can see that we do have all of the different analysis types available. But if you have not preset that, if you go in and take a look at the image, you, uh, if you go to the analysis ribbon here under type, you can change the analysis type to Western. And then there is also a pull down menu available right up here that you can choose as well. Now, as you will notice, we do get a new ribbon out here to the side. And so this is specific for the Western analysis. And most of the time, the boundary and lane lines will not be in the correct location. So the simplest way to do this is to click this redraw boundary button. And so what you want to do is to click and drag just to the outside of your outer lanes. You don't want to go through the middle of the lanes. You just want to be just to the outside of these. And then you set the number of lanes that you have loaded on your gel. And this also will include empty lanes uh, because uh, these are spaced out equally. And so uh, if you have an empty lane, you still need to include that uh, to get these spaced out correctly. Now, if need be, you can make adjustments to the boundary here. And you want the lane lines to be going somewhat through the center of the bands. They don't have to be going directly through the center because when we click the find button right here, it will make adjustments uh, to the, the lane locations. Now for editing these, uh, most of the time we would recommend that you switch over to single color uh, because you can adjust the band finding sensitivity and chances are they are going to be different between uh, the different wavelengths. And for the 700 channel here, it has found all of the bands and there was nothing extra that was found. So switch over here to the 800 channel. And there are some extra bands down here, these lower molecular weight bands. And so there's a few different things we can do. We can either, uh, using the select, I can click on the bands and just click the delete key on the keyboard. I can use this uh, fewer button to try to remove some of them. And if you notice that uh, using this fewer also removed one of the bands that I do want to analyze. So if need be, what you can do is to click on this add button and then click on the location of that band and then that band marker is added right there. Now, if you want, you can also merge these bands together. So if it, if it found a doublet, but you want it analyzed as a single band, if you highlight those, you can click the merge button and then those have now been merged into single uh, band markers. Uh, if you want to add to all of the lanes within an image, you can click to this add to all lanes right here, uh, move it to where it needs to be, click, and then it will find all of them within there. Um, so I'm just going to go back and, and change the editing here just a little bit to get back to the original analysis. And then uh, once you have all of those, uh, you're going to want to use, uh, if, if you are going to be doing molecular weight size and you want to choose your molecular weight marker. Now this has the Lycor one color marker. I'll be discussing the, the new chameleon markers here in just a moment. But I'm going to choose the, the one color marker and then also the number of molecular weight lanes that I have. Now on this particular image, I just have one lane. Uh, but if you have uh, two markers loaded on here, uh, it puts them, these uh, marker handles, just above the outermost lanes. And if you choose three, it puts one in the center. Now, if you just have one marker, but you have it uh, either in the center or the right-hand lane, if you click on this M1 right here, you can move that. And if I drop this right over the top of this lane, now this becomes my marker lane. And so you can edit that however you need to make sure that the, the marker represents or is actually um, on the lane that is necessary. Now, if I click on this edit button, I can take a look at all of the molecular weights that are within my marker set. And if you need to, you can also do editing right here. So if let's say that this 250 kilodalton band was not resolved properly uh, and you don't have a band marker for that, if you highlight that, you can remove it, and now this uppermost band will be represented at the 150 kilodalton weight. Now, as soon as I edit it 
one of those. It now becomes a custom marker set. And so if need be, I could save this for future use. Uh, th this editing is also very useful. If you have a marker from another company, you can come in and add, remove all of these weights to represent that particular marker. And then you can save that as one of your custom marker sets. For normalization, you just simply choose whichever uh, channel has your normalizing agent in it. In this particular image, uh, it is in the 700 channel. And so I'm going to choose that. If it, if it was in the 800 channel, you can set that. For background subtraction, you can either use the same options that we had uh, in uh, using shapes, or we, there's also the lane on here. And if we look at the lane profile, let's go back to both of these. And if we look at the profile for a particular lane, uh, you can see it's a little difficult to see here, but you can also you can remove this uh, background just from the lane itself. Now, in this image where I have very clean molecular weight, uh, I'm sorry, very clean. Uh, banding patterns on here, the lane is a perfectly fine option. And in most cases, lane will probably be, probably be what you would want to use. Um, occasionally, if you have a lot of nonspecific banding within your lane, uh, maybe the, uh, the average or median might be a better option. But in most cases, the lane will be what you want to use uh, for doing your background subtraction. So if we come down here to these uh, two new tables that we have, this Western Lanes table is just a, um, just gives you the information on the lane itself. So here under lane name, if you want, you can uh, change this default name. So if you want to give it a sample name or something like that, then that would be carried over here because there's the same uh, lane name column right here. And so if you do want to label your samples, then that will be kept over here um, on the bands table as well. And so as far as the molecular weight goes, that is represented here under the size right there. Uh, the quantification, the signal is the exact same calculation that we have uh, if, if you were to use the shapes um, and then uh, the normalized signal is based off of what was defined as the normalizing channel. And the way this works is that in the normalizing channel, it finds the band that has the highest signal, which in this particular uh, image, uh, it is this leftmost band right here. So that has the highest signal out of all of the other normalizing bands. It divides that signal, which is 19.5 in this case, by itself, and it comes up with this normalization factor. It then moves on to all of the other bands within the normalizing channel. It takes the signal from that band divided by the signal from the highest uh, signal. And so basically what it's determined is that there's 91.5% as much protein loaded in the second lane as compared to the first. Then going over to the 800 channel, it takes the signal from the band in the second lane divided by that normalization factor to come up with normalized signal. Now, if you do want a little bit more explanation of how this is all done, uh, you can find that uh, under the help section. Now, as far as the chameleon markers go, uh, these defaults are new to uh, Image Studio 5. So if you have uh, previous versions of Image Studio software, you will need to add those manually, but they are in here by default. And the chameleon markers work a little bit differently than uh, any of the one color markers. And what you will want to do is to make sure that you have chosen the correct marker depending on what you have loaded. So if you have used uh, the dual marker, uh, that has both 700 and 800 in there, you will need to choose the one that is appropriate. If you have just the chameleon marker, the singles, you will need to choose either the 700 or the 800, depending on which one that you have loaded. And 
there's also differences uh, in the 700 marker, uh, whether you're using the dual marker or the single color marker. The dual marker has 125 kilodalton band right here, uh, whereas in the 700 for the um, single color marker, it does not have that. So you do need to make sure that you choose the correct marker. So if I choose uh, the 700 dual right there and click on the edit button, you will see that that 125 kilodalton band is there. Uh, but if um, if I choose the 700 single marker, that 125 is not there. So it is very very important that you get that uh, that you, you that you choose the correct marker. And so then uh, the the marker lane setup is exactly the same. And uh, so I have the the dual marker right here, and that's in, loaded in this lane. If I had chosen the seven the single color, I would then move that over, and now that becomes my marker lane. Now, if you are doing the, the dual colored markers, if you have both the 700 and 800 loaded on here, uh, the the exporting is a little bit differently, is works a little bit differently than uh, previous marker sets that we have used. So I'm going to choose the 700 dual marker and make sure that this is in the correct location. Whoops. All right, so I have it right here. Now, because the, the, the 700 and 800 have different molecular weights, uh, you will need to make sure that you are only showing one of the channels at a time. So since I have the 700 displayed, I'm gonna choose just the 700. And what I did is I right clicked on there and then I'm having, uh, I'm just showing the 700 on there. And so now all of the bands are strictly from the 700 channel and they are all sized correctly at that point. And then what you will need to do is to switch over to the Chameleon 800 marker and under the channel right here, switch to the 800 channel to get all of those shown correctly. And you will want to export each channel separately to get all of those molecular weights to show up. So thank you very much.